Hello there, my name is Gary Short and I'm the technical evangelist on the Framework team. In the screencast, I want to introduce you to a new feature which is shipping in 10.2 and that is a feature of XPO having explicit transactions. Now, Explicit transactions in this case helps developers out in the scenario where you're working against the database which has some specific database constraints. And at a point when you're creating objects, at a particular point in time, there may be a danger of you breaking those constraints and causing a database error if you were to persist those objects to the database at that point. So what this feature allows you to do is it allows you to look as if you have saved that data to the database, but without having to actually break the constraints. Best thing to do is to show you an example right now. So here in this example, we have a person class and a person very simply has um, name and age and an object ID. The more interesting thing down here is when in a using statement, we create this new explicit unit of work. And under the explicit un unit of work, we create this person, this person, Thomas Brown, age 34. Now at this point, you will notice that we haven't actually stored the information to the database. However, if we create a new criteria operator here, which will look for a person with the same name and the same age as the person we've just created, and of course, our database is empty at this point, and we then get the explicit unit of work to find this object, then the person from the database would have the same object ID as the person we've created here. And this line here writes out both the person object ID and the person from database object ID. And if this has worked, both of these will be the same. Of course, in the second example here, within a separate using statement, we simply try and find the object from above, again using the find object method. This time, of course, it won't appear to have been written to the database. So this particular Boolean flag here, which states whether or not person from DB equals null, should be true. And if that's the case, this line here will write out that it is true that person from DB is null. So that's what we're expecting to see. So in the first case, we're expecting to see both of the objects having the same object ID. And in the second case, we're expecting to see that it's true, the person from DB is null. So let's execute this code now and find out if it works. And here you can see that both the person object ID and the person from DB object ID are equal. And in fact, it has written out that it's true the person from DB is null. So it has worked in this case. Once again, this aids us in a situation where we wish to appear to persist objects. However, if we were to do so, then we would break database constraints. Thank you for listening. And thank you for choosing Developer Express.